Hello, this is Shelley Stern Grace from Microsoft, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Civic Chat, Networking Our Neighborhoods. You can follow us at meetadvisors.com. Our guest today is Wendy Dubow. Wendy is the president and CEO of the United Way of Metropolitan Chicago. Wendy, it's great to have you here today. It's great to be here. Thank you, thank you. Well, let's start off our conversation. Can you just kind of give an overview of what United Way is doing in Chicago's neighborhoods? Sure, sure. We are actually the largest uh, private funder of health and human services. We resource, provide expertise and connections to change people's lives and help communities. And we are reaching about 1.7 million people wow. each year in the city and the suburbs and providing all kinds of resources, coordination, connection that basically make sure that kids are on track to succeed academically, that families become more financially stable, and that communities have healthy outcomes. That's great. So let's talk about those areas, uh, succeeding academically, so education, healthy outcomes, and economic development, right? Are those kind of the yeah. pillars that you work in? Yeah. For us, it's really family economic mm -hmm. development, if you will, making sure that families have income, jobs, savings, assets, that kind of and you focus this in particular communities? Are there some you want to highlight? Yes, we do. So we actually, our, our reach, our resources, expertise mm -hmm. and connection are reaching um, 60 very underserved communities around the region. So we've got a broad reach, mm -hmm. but we are going very, very deep into 10 neighborhoods that we have a new initiative that we're calling the Neighborhood Network Initiative for United Way. And those communities are in the city and the suburbs, and they're basically Bronzeville, Little Village, Auburn, Gresham, South Chicago, Austin, Brighton Park, Evanston, West Chicago, and Robbins, um, Blue Island. Fantastic. Okay, so, so great, great on the list. <laughs> <laughs> you on getting the list that quickly. So let's focus on maybe a couple yeah. of those. Maybe uh, tell me what you're doing yeah. in Brighton Park. Yeah. So the neighborhood network. We're really. Um, partnering with community-based organizations to work on income education and health solutions right. in a coordinated way. So instead of um, each community-based organization or a school, civic organization, church, kind of just working to try to reach right. people and change conditions independently, mm -hmm. we're really coming in the United Way as a, as a backbone, mm -hmm. resourcer and coordinator to bring the parties together and say, what are the objectives that this community really mm -hmm. wants to reach? Mm -hmm and pull it all together in terms of common goals and right. approaches and it's a, it's a much more coordinated effort. That's so important because obviously in the work that we've done and we've seen uh, the nonprofits, everyone has a fabulous mission, everyone's very dedicated, but there is duplication yeah. and through your coordinating effort and I love that term backbone yeah. that you provide uh, and the structure that you provide, you're increasing capacity, you're probably improving efficiency and obviously improving outcomes. So that's that's a huge role and I will tell you very, very much needed. So Brighton Park, c c tell me about some of the things you're seeing there. So Brighton Park, um, we are working very closely with um, the Brighton Park Neighborhood mm -hmm. Council, who's our lead partner and a whole coalition of about 25 mm -hmm. agency and community partners. And over the two years that we've been there, the graduation rate at Kelly High School, the public high school for Brighton Park, has gone from 72% a year to 84% a year. So we've been part of an, a community-wide initiative right. with a lot of parties working together to say, what, what do the kids need? Right. Um, what do the families, families need, need to right. make that happen? Because the parent engagement and involvement in the schools is so critical. You know, what are the health resources that make mm -hmm. kids healthy so they can do well in school? So that's just, just one data point. Um, we are now actually working with the community partners. They've set a goal that they want to reach a 90% graduation rate Fantastic. in the next few years. And so we are now playing that backbone role right. to help resource, coordinate, um, and make that all happen. And so we actually, we're funding, we're investing, we bring donors. Right. We bring donors investments. We bring literally donors in kind and donors right. into the neighborhood right. to volunteer and be part of it all. Um, and then we're working to really help design what are the service elements that need to come into the schools. Mm -hmm. It's very school-based. So health promoters programs, right. parent engagement programs. We have a parent mentors program in Brighton Park where parents come in and are helpful to teachers in the classroom and, and in the school. And as part of it, um, they're paid. Right. So nice. we get parent engagement and involvement. We've brought tax assistance services in the school. So that's a way for right you know, folks to be able to file their tax return right. 
often get the credit that right. they are due at the income right. level that they money are back. at, money back, um, as well as have opportunities to open up bank accounts, to save money, to fill out FAFSA forms, right. to get kids scholarships. So there's a lot of um, income supports and financial stability that's coming to families through the schools. So you really do have a 360 approach, you know, where, where again, it, it's, the, it's, it, yeah. it's family centric, but it is education, financial, economic development, and health. Yes. So it's really, yeah, four areas. Yeah. And what I am anticipating and what I hope that you'll be seeing is that as you get some successes, yeah. especially with the increase in the graduation rate, if there's an older sibling who's now graduated, the younger rising student from the middle school will see that as role model behavior, and then we'll start seeing some acceleration in yes. some of these outcomes. So that would be great. Yeah, that's a big part of what we see as the potential of this model is real momentum and right. kind of generating real results. Right. So instead of um, just funding or supporting a program that says we'll work with kids on these activities outside of school, right. now we have the opportunity through this co coordination and coalition of partners to say which are the kids mm -hmm. in the school that are struggling? Mm -hmm. and literally who are they and right. what do they need? Right. Do they need really tutoring? Do, right. do they need some health support? Mm -hmm. Is there a family situation that needs social services that we can you know, come in and provide? And so right. it's much more about the right resources right. that are needed right. in the right ways yep. to get real. And, what, and what, what's important for Brighton Park may be different in Bronzeville, as an example, and so then you kind of reprioritize, if I can use that term, what the resources are. So can you give us just a quick highlight about what's going on in Brown? Yeah, I know that's exactly right. Every community obviously um, will design what's critical mm -hmm. in terms of its own needs and mm -hmm. solutions, mm -hmm. but we do see it as variations of income education health mm -hmm. kinds of outcomes. So in Bronzeville, we're actually working on um, a health outcome, a he healthy community outcome. Mm -hmm. The um, Bright Star Church and sure. Community Outreach Group is a lead entity for a coalition in Bronzeville. This is a, a neighborhood network initiative that, that we're, we're planning right now. Mm -hmm. We are partnered with the hospitals, Northwestern right. mm -hmm. and University of Chicago. They are co-funding with us Good. to basically institute a trauma intervention mm -hmm. program in Bronzeville that will help kids and families deal with some of the trauma that's come from the violence mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and provide all the wraparound social services, health services, and reach into kids in the right. schools to really make a difference and heal and get, get folks back on healthy trajectory. That's terrific and, and so important and such, such a great neighborhood that uh, I think to a certain degree really needs a bit more attention. So that's great that you're investing there as well. If people want to learn more about these specific programs and you know work with and hopefully support the United Way, Wendy, where how do they get in touch with you? So our you know our website is liveunitedchicago.org, mm -hmm. so everybody can find us there. Um, they can also find if they go to the site. We have a lot of affinity groups. Great. Something that we've been developing to really get people involved. So we've got a women's leadership council and women in philanthropy. Uh, young Leaders Group, a lot of different donor giving societies, um, a United Pride Group. So that's a great way to connect with us, come to events, um, be part of the community and, and learn what we're doing. And then we're, you know, follow us on social media. That's terrific. Yeah. It's so great to hear with the specificity of what the United Way is bringing to our neighborhoods in Chicago. I really appreciate your time today, making it come alive and giving us those great examples. Look forward to continued success. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.